good evening. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here. Let's all stand together as we sing hymn number 55, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. Hymn number 55. Sing praise to God who reigns above, the God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. With healing balm, our soul he fills, and every faithless murmur stills to God all praise. Welcome back this evening. Just a couple of prayer requests that we want to mention. Don't forget to pray for Phyllis Murray as she is back in the hospital. Also, I just received word from uh, Ryan and Bethany still has not delivered, so keep them in your prayer um, as they are still at the hospital. Pastor Brent, Pastor Dave are both recovering from COVID. And then we also just got in tonight, uh, Diana Jenkins will be having eye surgery on Tuesday. And she's also having some back pain and they will be doing a consultation on Friday concerning what's causing that pain. So keep these and many others that are ill in our uh, church, keep them in your prayers during this time. And let's go to the Lord and open our service tonight with prayer. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity that we can come once again to worship you. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the pastor, Lord. We just uh, pray that you'd be with uh, Pastor Dave and Pastor Brent as they are recovering from COVID, Lord. We just ask that you'd uh, just continue to give them the strength that they need. Be with uh, Phyllis. We just pray that you'd uh, give the doctors wisdom as they work with her and strengthen her body. Also, we think of uh, Diane Jenkins as she's going to be going in for this uh, eye surgery here on Tuesday that you'll guide the surgeon's hands, Lord, that you're, uh, you'll be able to give them wisdom as they do this operation and also uh, give the wisdom to the consultation for the, her back pain that they would be able to find out what is causing this. We think of uh, Bethany and Ryan. We just pray that you'd be with them continually as they are waiting on the arrival of their new daughter. We just pray that you'd uh, keep them uh, in, help everything to continue to go smoothly, Lord. And Father, that uh, you'd just be glorified through everything that's uh, said and done tonight and through this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Turning your hymnals to hymn number 295, 295, sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, 
wonderful words of life, words of life, beauty, teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, Christ the blessed one gives to all, Wonderful words of life, sinnerless to the loving call. Wonderful words of life, all so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words. Announcements is a reminder that tomorrow the school campus will be closed for the holiday. Tuesday, we Caleb Penn, and in the evening on Tuesday at 6 30, we will have the men's and ladies' Bible study. We invite you to come out. That is open to the church as a whole. On Wednesday, we have our regular slated uh, events across the street. We have the youth and the uh, young people as far as the children. And then over here, we will have our winter electives and Grief Share. Grief Share is meeting in the conference room in the church office. Then on Thursday, we have both the Nevertheless or Never Alone Widows Luncheon as well as the Men's Luncheon. So the Men's Luncheon, we'll meet at Yummy's Buffet. And uh, we invite you to come out. If, you, if you're not doing anything at the noon hour, come out for the hour, share testimonies, have a time to be able to break bread together and just have some enjoyable fellowship. We also, uh, there is also a college hangout on Thursday night. And then on Friday, we do have the RU, and I did mention this morning about that uh, we do still have needs. We can use people for our child care and uh, nursery, and that is on a rotation basis, so you would not have to show up every Friday night, as well as we are looking for someone that could come in and help do the secretarial work so that we can move my wife out of that role and have her going into helping with the ladies groups. Also, don't forget that on Saturday, this coming Saturday, is uh, Marilyn Jackson's uh, funeral, and that will be right here at the church. That is at noontime, but two hours prior from 10 to 12 is visitation. The burial service will be following, and then the meal here also for the family. So keep them in your prayers also as, uh, as they are going through this change uh, of life as losing a loved one. Uh, just pray for God's comfort, send them a card, encourage them during this time. At this time, if we could have the ushers come forward, we'll receive the evening offering. And let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you once again for the opportunity to be able to give back to you a portion of what you've given to us. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, be with this church, that you'd meet every need. And Lord, as we don't only reach our community, but we reach around the world, that we'd be able to use these funds that, that uh, we are able to uh, just further the gospel around the world and in our community. And we'll just give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Naomi, for that offering. In music, let's lift our voices once again and sing hymn number 571. 571. Let's stand together as we sing, When we all get to heaven, what a day, glorious day that will be. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. At this time, we'll dismiss the four to eight-year-olds to their class, and we'll sing the next stanza. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory onward to the prize before us soon his beauty will behold soon the pearly gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold when we all to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the victory thank you you may be seated at this time we'll have a special in song by rachel wallace
Thank you, Rachel, for that message and song. Appreciate that this evening. Take your Bibles, turn to hymn number... <laughs> Ready? No, okay. Uh, actually, we are going to turn to a hymn, but it's not a hymn, it's a psalm. Psalm 33. Psalm 33 is we're going to kick things off. We're going to be all over the place tonight talking about music and the ministry of that and how it affects us here uh, at Grace and how it, affect, how it should affect you in your lives. Uh, so we'll turn over to Psalm 33. Uh, I do say him a lot, and so uh, that's where that comes from. But uh, the Psalms was the hymnal of the uh, Hebrews, and so uh, it's fitting that we should start there if we're going to talk about music. But uh, more importantly, let's go before the uh, throne and ask the Lord to bless the uh, service this evening. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. I pray that you would use me, that you would use your word. Uh, and that I would be able to rightly divide it this evening, and that uh, we would leave here tonight challenged uh, to do our best to be more like you, and we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Psalm chapter 33, verse 1 through 3, we'll read this real quick, and it's kind of a jumping off point, and then we're going to really jump off and, and see how far we can get tonight. Psalm 33, verse 1 says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous! For praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. And so clearly we can see right from the beginning that music is important. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, if you'd like to, we can flip back over to Exodus chapter 15. We started with the Psalms. But now we're going to look at the first song. The first song in the Bible, or at least uh, chronologically recorded anyway, um, if we look at Exodus chapter 15, Exodus chapter 15, for those of you that are studies of, uh, students of history, maybe you know that we're going to the crossing of the Red Sea, and right there at uh, Exodus chapter 15, we have verse 1, then, Mo then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and this is the song of Moses, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. And so we can see the first song listed in Scripture is a song of praise to God for delivering his people. And that's just a real encouragement to know that God is always there delivering us, and even the first song in Scripture tells us that. The Bible has over 600, some even say up to 1,000 references to music, whether that's the word music, uh, which, by the way, is spelled with a K, if you're trying to search that in the King James, M-U-S-I-C-K, um, uh, or, or if it's talking about singing or instruments or any of those uh, things related to music. There's lots of words related to music, and so there's almost a thousand references and about, I would say, 600 that are directly referencing music. So the Bible has a lot to say about music, especially considering there's only about 500 plus mentions of heaven, uh, only about 350 mentions of uh, love and charity, uh, only 348 mentions of faith, faithfulness, and uh, Therefore, the Bible does have a lot to say about music, and obviously, God thinks it's important enough for us to know. So, what is music? That's an obvious question to ask. Well, if we're going to look at it scientifically, and we're just going to break it down, we can look at it and see that music is simply organization of sound and silence in time. And that's about as boiled down as I could get it uh, from any of the definitions that I've looked at. So, if you just think of music as the organization of sound and silence in time, um, that's kind of the definition of music, but what is music really? And that is, it's a tool. It's a very powerful tool that God has given us. And it has been used many different ways. Uh, it's been used by marketers to sell you products. It's used in stores, and there's a billion dollar industry that uh, stores research what songs are gonna keep you shopping longer and spend more money. Uh, it's used to excite to energize, it's used to calm, uh, it can be used to bring anger or joy, it can be used constantly to encourage brand recognition. And now I'm going to play every jingle you never wish you heard. No, I'm not. Um, I did that once. But uh, if I were to, let's see if you guys can recognize a couple of these. Um, here's the, the most hated jingle of all time. 800-588-2300. Empire Today, right? Everybody hates that jingle. Anybody with television knows that one. Um, what about, uh, let's see here. 
Ta da 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 da. Pum pa da 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 da. Anybody know that one? The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. All right, that makes more sense when you get the words with it. Uh, and then let's see. Oh, this one. Um, I probably can't even get to the first phrase before you guys are not. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that. Okay. Now, most of those were 90s commercials. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so if you're younger than that, you're welcome. If you're older than that, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's obvious that music uh, is a powerful tool that can influence how you think or even how you respond. Uh, to, to different situations. Uh, just to clarify that a little bit more, there's a short little video I want to run. Uh, so guys, if you can go ahead and run that video and then we'll come back and talk about it. My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, Four, six, seventh, and last note. Now I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. when I realized the good news she was talking about. Music's a tool, a very powerful tool. You think you're listening to a scale, and the next thing you know, Handel's here. <laughs> and he's put that earworm in your mind, and you think, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Very powerful message. And the reality of it is it comes from music. If it wasn't for music, that really wouldn't mean much. Wouldn't communicate. But because of music, we know music is a powerful tool that can communicate regardless of language. That's a tune that's known around the world in many different languages all of whom would have that same reaction if they understood the words leading up to that moment. Just like a knife can carve a figurine or cut your finger, a hammer can drive a nail or break your hand. Tools, when used properly, can be extremely useful. Likewise, a tool used improperly can be quite dangerous. Music can be used for good or evil, so where does music fit in ministry? How should we use this God-given tool? And so that brings, that brings us to really where we're going to start tonight. I know, you're like, start? Yes. So we're going to really start looking here at the ministry of music. The first thing we're going to look at tonight is the purpose of music. 
What is the purpose of music specifically for Christians and that mentioned in scripture? Second Chronicles chapter 15, or excuse me, chapter 5, verse 13 says, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. The first purpose is for praising and thanking God. There it goes. The purpose of music. Purpose of music, the first purpose is praising and thanking God. Many times we have sung the song, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus our Blessed Redeemer. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Now thank we all our God. These are all hymns and songs that reflect the idea of praising and thanking God. Even the first song we sang tonight, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. And this, yeah, since I'm in charge of picking the songs, they're all going to kind of fit here once that, one after another. But we have the purpose of music, first of all, is praising and thanking God. If we look at Colossians 3.16, Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The second purpose of music is teaching and admonishing one another. Teaching and admonishing one another. We have songs like, Jesus loves me. A mighty fortress is our God. Amazing grace. He's able, he's able to deliver thee. Jesus is coming again. Those are songs that all introduce the idea of teaching and admonishing. We take hymns and we, we look at a hymn and we say, well, what is the biblical principle in that song? And we can teach with that. We can admonish with that. In James 5, verse 13, we have, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. The other purpose is to encourage the downhearted or the depressed or weary. We have songs like, What a friend we have in Jesus. God will take care of you. Nearer, still nearer. When we all get to heaven. All songs that are encouraging. Now you say, what's the difference between encouraging and admonition? Well, if you look at uh, the second one, teaching and admonishing, those two kind of go hand in hand because admonition is correction. It's teaching, and it's teaching when someone is wrong, correcting them away. So could it be that a song that you hear, if it has a biblical principle in it, could correct a behavior that you have? It could. It could also teach you a biblical principle. I know for myself that I constantly, I know I'm a musician, but constantly reminded of songs that I've learned in times of need, whether that's a time of distress, a time of temptation, a time where I need comfort, or a time of praise. Songs can flood into your mind, they can fill your heart, and they can help you praise and thank God can help you teach others and admonish others, even teach yourself and admonish yourself, and it can always encourage the downhearted. Music was created perfect and was affected by the fall. Music will be in heaven, according to Revelation. Music will not was not created for entertainment, so make your music choices focus on God. So that's the purpose of music. The purpose of music is to glorify God through praising and thanking, teaching other believers, teaching unbelievers through song, encouraging those around us, the people of music. Okay, so I get it. That's what music's supposed to do. Fantastic. Great. Good night. No. Who is supposed to be part of the music? You? Me? I'm supposed to be in charge of the music. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm in here somewhere, right? Well, let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about that. First Chronicles 15, verse 16 says, And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up their voice with joy. 
By the way, 1 Chronicles 15 is where David is preparing the temple, or excuse me, is preparing to bring the Ark of the Covenant to uh, the tabernacle um, in preparation for when Solomon will build the temple later. And so he's setting up singers and instruments of music to uh, be able to praise the Lord with the returning of the Ark. Psalm 68, 25, and 26, the singers went before and the players on instruments followed after. Among them were the damsels playing with timbrels. Bless ye God in the congregations, even the Lord from the foundations of Israel. So, who are the people of music? The people of music are skilled musicians. Those of you that have taken music lessons, those of you that sing in the choir, those of you that play in the orchestra, those of you that are willing to stand up here and sing the ever-frightening vocal solo in front of your fellow church members. You are the skilled musicians. You have a place in the worship of God. You have a place in the church. You have a place carved out in scripture where you are specifically mentioned as part of the music, the ministry of music. In Ezra chapter 3, verse 10, Ezra chapter 3, verse 10, and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of the king of David, king of Israel. Ezra chapter 3, verse 11 says, and they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. So, we have choir members, we have orchestra members, we have people who sing or play special music, offertories, and then we have, so those are the singers, we have the instruments, I broke that out, I didn't even realize it, instrumentalists, and then we have unskilled unskilled singers, unskilled musicians, but mostly unskilled singers. We have priests, we have the Levites, we have all the people sang together. So sorry, nobody gets out. Everybody is part of the ministry of music. Nobody gets an excuse. But Pastor Halleck, I am terrible at singing. Great, it's how God made you. But, but Pastor Halleck, somebody's going to hear me. Okay. You know who's supposed to hear you? God. You know who you're not supposed to care about? Hearing your praise to God? The people around you. You're supposed to praise God, period. It doesn't say praise the Lord with a beautiful song. I don't see it. Now, there are skilled singers and there are skilled musicians, and that's their job, hopefully. But for the rest of us, it says, and all the people shouted with a great shout. So if your attempt at singing is shouting, okay. If your heart is in the praise of God, so be it. Sing out. Don't be afraid. And so help me, if one of you turns around and looks at someone who sings loud after this and gives them a cross look, I want you to come tell me. Because <laughs> that's not nice either. We should be excited when someone chooses to praise God openly. We should praise God with them. Not because they have the greatest voice, not because they have the best sound, but because they're willing to praise God. And they have the same reason to praise him that we do, or that you do, that I do. So remember, you have to praise God too. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Those are a bunch of Old Testament references. That doesn't apply to me. <coughs> okay, turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, verse 30 says, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Now, most of you know that that's at the end of the Lord's Supper, right before Gethsemane, and so the people in the room were disciples. And we all know that all of the disciples were trained musicians from the temple, right? Nope. They were not trained musicians. They were not from the temple. They were a tax collector, 
They were fishermen, tradesmen, even a political activist. But they sang. They sang together. They sang worship. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Missionaries and preachers. That's right. Preachers don't get out of singing either. Missionaries don't get out of singing, although missionaries end up having to do all of the things most of the time. But the, the, the exciting part to me of this one, and I know this is probably uh, nitpicking here, but in, uh, in Acts 16, 25, it says, and the prisoners heard them. Now, whether that was a good thing for the prisoners or a bad thing for the prisoners, either way, God heard them, and God shook the foundation of the prison, and he opened the gates for that praise. You see, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. James 5.13 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. And just in case you were wondering, James, probably the brother of Jesus, therefore probably a carpenter, is the one that wrote that. Not a Levite, not a musician, but someone that says, Praise God. Praise God with song. So, we see the people of music are skilled. There are skilled people, and it is necessary for skilled people to be part of the ministry of music. But just as important, if not more important, than the skilled musicians are the unskilled singers. Those of you that sit in the congregation and enjoy when people sing really nice songs, or when people play really well on the piano or the organ, or whatever instrument that they may bring, that's fantastic. And that is another way that we can be drawn to Christ and we can be drawn to praise. But don't think that just because we have a choir and we have an orchestra that you don't need to participate. Your participation is necessary and even commanded in Scripture. So we have the purpose of music. We have the people of music. And now we have the place of music. Now, many people have heard of the purpose and the, uh, the people of music before, but oftentimes the place of music sometimes gets misconstrued. So let's look at 1 Chronicles 15, excuse me, nope, Psalm 33, that's where we're moving to. Psalm 33, praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings, sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. The place of music, as we've been alluding to this entire service, is worship. Music must be a part of worship. If we do not use music in worship, then we are missing out on one of the elements of worship. Now, some people say, well, a worship service is the singing, and then you have the preaching. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. But a worship service is all of those things put together. We have prayer. We have Bible reading. We have singing. We have instruments playing. We have offerings. And we have preaching. And all of those things make up a worship service. And music must be a part of worship. Praising and thanking God. Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay, where's the music? Wait, wait, did I read that right? How shall they call on those who have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who have not heard? And how shall they hear without a singer? Nope, that's not it. How shall they hear without a preacher? Okay, so can Scripture be used in song? Absolutely. It's been done many wonderful ways, and I'm sure it will continue to be done many more ways. 
Music can be used and can be tied to Scripture. We know the Psalms is a songbook and a wonderful songbook. But Romans 10, 14 talks about reaching the unbeliever. And it doesn't mention anything about music. It doesn't say, give them your best song and they'll find you. It doesn't say, go find the best musicians and you'll grow your church. It doesn't say anything about music. It says, how shall they hear without a preacher? Music must not replace the preaching of the scriptures. If music ever becomes the replacement for the word of God, go somewhere else. Whether that's your church you go to on vacation, whether that's Grace here in Muncie, anywhere you go, if scripture and preaching is not the focus of the worship service, find somewhere else to go. And I'm the music guy. And I love music. And I love how music can influence people. I love how music can bring people to a state of worship. And I love to worship God with music. But that's not the place of music in church. The place is not to overshadow Scripture. The place is not to overshadow the preaching of God's Word. Because how will they hear without a preacher? Without someone to bring God's Word forth, all of our worship is in vain. First Colossians 1 Colossians 1.21 says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Music should not take the place of preaching. Many churches today put all their emphasis on their music and say that the message will get out that way. According to the Bible, God has chosen preaching to fulfill that need. Now, the scripture says the foolishness of preaching. That's because music is very ordered. Music is very structured. Music has a very intense purpose and point. But someone getting up and talking, well, people can just choose to get up and leave whenever they want. There's no end to the song. There's no cadence. There's no uh, musical structure. So how will they know? They'll know by a preacher. Because that is what God is going to use. Now, I'm not saying God can, can't use music to direct someone to him. What I'm saying is exactly what Scripture says. How will they hear without a preacher? And that God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Music is a tool that should be used to prepare the heart for preaching, for the preaching of the Word of God. The power of music must be used to enhance a focus on the things of God. So using music, we can bring people to a place where they're more prepared to hear the word of God. To subdue the bombardment of thoughts and distractions. Have you ever wondered why we sing so many stanzas of the first hymn? That's because just like you, just like me, if you come in the door with small kids, you're probably distracted. Or if you came in and the roads were icy, it was dangerous, and you, you're distracted. Or you came in and someone grabbed you and told you their life story right before you came in, you're distracted. And you're not focused on the things of God. So we take that time in our service to try to refocus, to try to put the focus on Scripture by bringing music into the picture, to bring us to a place where God is at the forefront of our minds and we are prepared to truly worship God. 
That's the place of music. The place of music is to get you to a point where you can hear God's voice when he speaks to you. Now, can music communicate? Yes, it does. But the preaching of God's word is to be the preeminent way in which the gospel is to go forth. So, what does that mean for ministers in the area of music? What does it mean? Well, what about those that are playing offertories, those that are singing solos, those that are in the choir or in the orchestra? What does that mean? We should use our God-given talent to praise and thank God, as well as teach and admonish those around us. Those of you that minister in music, those of you that are part of the orchestra, the choir, the special music, any of those things, be aware of your message and be prepared to minister. You should not use your God-given talent to lift up yourself. As musician in a worship service, we should have our hearts right with God as we begin the worship service. If our hearts are not right with God, how can we expect our ministry to be effective? We come in distracted all the time. I know I do. I have three kids. They love to distract me. It's their job. Because I'm supposed to help them take care of them. Now, don't get me wrong. My wife does an amazing job of letting me do my job on Sunday morning. And praise the Lord for her. But there are days where I have to take a minute, even after getting to church, and say, okay, Lord, how can you use me today? And if you are a choir member, if you are preparing a special or an offering of music that day, you need to be prepared too. And you need to get your heart right to make sure that your ministry is not inhibited by your distraction, but that it is free to work despite you and anything you may be dealing with. How can we ask others to follow us in worship if we're not prepared to worship ourselves? It's a question I ask me myself every Sunday. When I stand up to lead you, I have to make sure I'm right. And in all honesty, I'm not always there, but I try. And your responsibility as someone who uh, is bringing music or presenting music before others, you need to have that same attitude as well. So what does that mean for everyone else, for the members of the congregation? What does that mean to everybody who doesn't have a particular musical skill. One, participate. Be a part of the music. Listen and learn from the music. If it's a song you don't know, find that nugget of truth that you can hang on to the rest of the day. Find that melody that'll stick in your head and remind you of the truth of God's word throughout the day. Make sure that you are participating in the singing and in the congregational music of the day. Because that is going to help you prepare your own heart for the preaching of God's word. Are you leading your family in worship? Dad? Mom? Do your kids see you sing in church? Are you setting that, that example for them? Or are you giving them an excuse not to? Do you engage your mind and your heart in the music, or do you just hang on until the preaching? The banner of the cross has a phrase, as an ensign fair we lift it up today, or as an ensign fair. Does anybody know what an ensign is? It's a banner. Have you ever stopped to think about what an ensign is? It's a young, enlisted, or commissioned officer. So you can look at that phrase two different ways. As an ensign fair, maybe it's a new Christian. We can lift the banner of the cross. 
or it's reiterating lifting the banner of the cross. There's a royal banner given for display. Or, here's another one, come thou fount of every blessing, here I raise mine Ebenezer. What's that? Is, is that another banner? Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, till now the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not again enter the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. 1 Samuel 7, 12. Ebenezer. It has a reason. It has a place. Are you engaged in the music? And finally, do you allow your heart to be prepared by the music? Or does it simply take up time and space in the service? The songs are going so long. Pastor, you know he's going to preach for at least 45 minutes. We're going to be here till 1230. Better get my reservation in now. Is that how you think about a music service? I hope not. Music is a powerful tool. And when a music honors God, and God uses it to focus your mind on his word, then the preaching of God's word can become more effective and be its most effective. See, worship is a complete package that starts from the beginning of the service to the final hymn. And we need to be engaged in every part of it, whether you are involved in special music or whether you are involved in congregational singing. I trust that all of you have the desire to be part of the worship and part of the ministry of music. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you for the gift of music. I thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to look into your word this evening. I pray that you would use this to challenge us. Lord, I know it challenges me. I pray that you would take our music, that you would accept it, that it would be acceptable to you. I pray that it would be glorifying to you I pray that it would minister to those around us. And I pray that you would get all the glory for it. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you can stand up. I don't know exactly how the Lord may have spoken to you tonight from this message or from something else that he may be have worked on your heart through the week. But we're going to give you an opportunity to come and respond. And if you need to come down and pray at the altar, we'll give you this opportunity. And I encourage you to, uh, to make things right with God. Don't, don't go out of here. If there's something God's been working in your life on this week or longer even, get it settled tonight before you leave tonight. So we're going to sing the first verse here. Stephen, go ahead and lead us. More love to thee. Thank you for coming again tonight. Be in prayer as uh, for the different prayer requests that I've given to you uh, and others that you may know that are ill, uh, part of our family here, church family. Uh, also keep uh, in prayer for Pastor Rory as he'll be traveling home tomorrow. He uh, went down to visit uh, Jared for his 21st birthday. This has been planned for many months. Uh, and it was interesting because uh, Pastor Halleck and I was not scheduled to preach today, and then everything happened with uh, COVID with the other pastoral staff, and so we found out Wednesday that we were slotted, and 
And the first song that came to my mind, actually, was uh, as we were getting out of that meeting, was should we sing, you know, uh, hold the fort for I am coming, you know? <laughs> so we, I jokingly said that to Pastor Rory. But I do appreciate that message, uh, Pastor Halleck. Uh, I know music is a huge part of all of our lives. I know it's a big part of my life. Um, one thing I'll, I'll just share, and that is that many times when a temptation comes my way, and I cry out, I wish I could say I cried out every time, but I don't. But I cry out, Lord, help me because of, and whatever the temptation is. God usually brings a, a song to my mind, and usually it's victory in Jesus. And I'll start humming it or singing it. If no one's around, I'll sing it. No. And, uh, you know, but what a truth. Victory in Jesus. I don't have to go through this battle alone. Jesus is with me. So I encourage you, you know, get some great music, gospel music, uh, the truths of the music. We do have some in the bookstore. And if we have something you're wanting that we cannot, we do not have in, let me know and I can uh, order it from our suppliers. But music is an important part of our walk with the Lord. So I encourage you all to, to uh, get some good, solid music that will be able to help encourage you in your walk. This time we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. I'm going to ask Bob Weinbarger if he would close us in prayer, and then we'll have a closing song. When we all get to heaven, Thank you for coming. Look forward to see you on Wednesday night.